everyone has a story and every i feel like every story will help and every story will heal You're perfect. See, now your head's, your head's the same size as me. I love it. Yeah. We're good. I love it. Someone said my backdrop looked fake, like it was like a, a Zoom backdrop. Yeah, because perspectively, yes. it's not a, it's it not looks like, like a, It looks like my head. Yeah. It's kind of like Willy Wonka. <laughs> yes. When I looked at it, I was like, why do I look like I'm this big thing stuck inside <laughs> this small cubicle? I saw it when I looked at it. Oh my God, that's really funny. So yeah, you're literally like in a Willy Wonka, like giant person in this small room. Mm -hmm. I love it, it's funny. But but seriously, today your lighting just looks amazing. Does it? Yeah, like your lighting in the background and your skin and your hair, all of it looks beautiful today. So it, I, I'm glad because I was gonna go in my usual spot and I was like this top against the wall where I usually am in, in Kyle's office, I was like, I would look like death. No, you look, no, your coloring today with the colors and this, it looks perfect. Yeah, all right. It looks perfect. Yes, and I have on my favorite shirt, but you can't see it, it says baddie. Oh my God, I love it. Right? I love it. I was trying, I was trying to figure out how I can get it in the shot, but it's not working. <laughs> You would have to go back. Like I would have to go back and then you would see like art and then I really look weird. Look how weird that looks. Yeah, no. No. Oh shoot, you got the art and hustle style. I do. I have the art hustle shirt on. I love anyway, it. Guys, okay. I just want to interrupt my own video here and let you know that um, if you can really help me out and like, subscribe, comment, because that really helps our algorithm and push it to people that really need to hear that. I, I just started Googling on YouTube how to make music on GarageBand or something like that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I mean, the funny thing is that, like, unfortunately, I got that from my dad. Yeah. Well, fortunately, unfortunately, who he turned out to be, but fortunately... <laughs> You know, that if that was one of the best things he gave you, then that was pretty damn good because you're killing it. Yeah, because the positive, um, uh, I keep saying unfortunately, but it is fortunate. The fortunate things I did receive, one of the ch one of the things I was going to title my book was like the things I learned from, I don't know what I was going to call it, the rapist or something like that. Things I learned from it because that would draw somebody in of like, holy shit, what the fuck did you learn from your rapist kind of mm -hmm. thing, you know? Because it's like- mm -hmm. Like, what the fuck could uh, you have gotten for it? And the positive hustler, the no <laughs> bullshit, the let's get shit done part of me. Ow, it's oh, 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 trauma lessons. Trauma lessons. That's really what it is. It's like my lessons from trauma. Yeah. Like, what did I learn? What did I gain? Right. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of like hustling, hustling the healing. That's hustle the heal. <laughs> See, there we go. <laughs> oh, it's a good thing these things are recorded. So, like, but you know what? It really is a good thing that it's really recorded because, I, like, when I was collecting these podcasts, like, I would forget. I forgot. Like, I know we have these amazing conversations, but I would forget like the beautiful quotes and the revelations we have until yeah. like. 10 podcasts later and I'm editing them. I'm like, holy shit, that was fucking amazing. <laughs> and it's looking, get it out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Love the shirt. All right. And let's, let's hustle that, hustle that healing. Mm, I oh, like that. Cool. Hustle that healing. There you go. Hustle, hustle that healing. That have to go in a water bottle. Yeah, yeah. Like that to go with your big leap. Yeah. So, but yeah. I'm thinking healing, like everything art and hustle, everything art and hustle, but you've done, everything you've done has been around healing. Yeah. Mm, hustle that healing. I like that. Hustle that healing. finally getting back to me you know my art all I want to do is art 
And the other thing is that I love stories. So like to me, art is in everything. You, your art is your voice, your speaking, your connection. You know, you mm. can you can feel everyone's energy. That's your art. It's the art of living to me. So art and hustle to me is the art of living and art of it and everything. Uh, I hope that you've cut that piece right there and make it your intro and your outro because that was done. Welcome to the Art and Hustle Gallery Conversation slash uh, Doc Sun, um, Dope Chicks Journey, <laughs> Spiritually Woke, all of it jumbled together, um, inspiring weekly conversations. Welcome back here, Doc Sun, to hey. beautiful conversations that we have multiple revelations every yeah, week. Yeah, this week we should definitely, given what you, the things you're working on for 2023, the things I'm working on for 2023, I think a great inspirational conversation we can jump off for the listeners today mm -hmm. is around taking risks mm -hmm. and how they can pay off, right? Okay. So you've talked all the time about taking risks, which is how this podcast, right? Art and hustle, right? That was a risk. Huge. That was a crazy risk huge risk to put my voice and face out there to be exposed and not just to be exposed to share like a really 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 like dark part of your life I mean that is ginormous because that's something I've never wanted to talk about less alone share it we got you we understand it's so bad I can't even say the word um to even do that because it's a really hard thing to put yourself out there and say those words and tell that story. And, and it was something that was always in me where I want to be able to share it because I want to help other people. Mm -hmm. Like that's my goal and mission is to tell it so I can help somebody else and set like my pain hopefully will set somebody else free. So was that your initial was so what you just said, I want to help someone and set someone else free. When you hit record oh. on that first, so what was the like? Because, right, so many people, it's yeah. top 2023, people are setting goals, blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But the reality oh, is, never really work out, right? They just <laughs> drop it. <laughs> I'm going to go to the gym a month into it. No, I'm done. But you know what it is? I think it's, I think it'll all come back to people just not willing to put themselves out there for the risk, right? They'll yeah. start long enough to go, like yeah. to pay to pay for the membership. Yeah. Go for a couple of weeks, realize it's getting hard and then turn back. It's so crazy. My trainer said that this morning we were taking class in the gym and he was like, don't be like these people. He's like, the gym is packed. He's like, just don't now, be like just people. January. It's just gonna he be said, back in January. He said, don't be like the people. They'll he said they'll come to class and he said they'll try something. Try and they, and they won't be good at it. There's no trying. What yeah, was like, the risk for you in your mind that had you like there was something in your yeah, mind yeah. that went from your brain to your finger to press so that. Or so the original, said before was originally I wanted to do a Netflix documentary about my mm -hmm. journey to starting Art and Hustle and meeting all the people. And I feel like everyone had a story of like what it takes to push your art because art is a very personal thing. That's your soul and your your feelings, your life, everything. Like you're you're putting all of your energy into something that you're trying to sell. And so like, originally that was a daunting task. I was like, well, I can't do that because of COVID. So let me do it Zoom style and continue and talk to those people and get their stories on Zoom. Mm. But then what shifted it more was talking to Schiavo. So when I talked to Schiavo, I realized more of like the racism and then all the giants among us who graduated from CI and what they're doing now and all the amazing stories of what they're doing now that I was like, yeah. oh, it'd be really cool to talk to all of those giants among us that graduated from, you know, CI and the racism that we went through and the microaggressions and being steered to CI and getting those stories. Cause eventually that's another thing where I was like, that would be a great Netflix, like 
listen documentary as well of like central ice lips and the giants among us so if i ever air it i already said it here no one yeah. can take my idea um but, but there are there are a lot and there and in long island in general mm -hmm. yeah but sorry i didn't mean to cut you off go ahead oh, no. i think it, the correlating things that's happening is the stories that i like to hear also because i think i want to hear other people's story because that helped me on my journey yeah is to know that i'm not alone and to know i've heard someone else's story who went through something really hard and got through it so mm -hmm. i feel like that also helps me to want to even that's where i evolved to wanting to help other people is because it's the stories that helped me and the the struggles that people went through and i want to know how did you get through it or how did you start your business how did you get over that hump of like right. push, pushing your passions and your purpose and your missions to mm. whatever you wanted to do like i want to know how you got to where you are now yeah and what struggles you went through like that's one of the yeah, most and what and what risks did you take right yeah. because some people, some people think a risk is like oh a financial risk right but people don't realize that what stops a lot of people is the risk of looking bad. Yes. The risk of being judged. And that's how, that's all those things that I felt like the risk of putting yourself out there to be judged, to look and sound stupid and, mm -hmm. you know, or, yeah. but yeah, like as a kid, I was always afraid to talk because I was always afraid that what I said was sounding stupid didn't sound smart or what i said wasn't right so i'd rather just um stay quiet and not get into trouble i was or writing the book i was like i wanted to just be invisible so i wouldn't get in trouble and i wouldn't get yelled at and i wouldn't be wrong like i just wanted to be invisible wow and look at you now not quite invisible <laughs> not quite the full opposite of being invisible yeah and then putting that podcast with you out like that's the first time I actually said all of those words really well on like public yeah. oh, level so sharing it with you on yours was the first time I've ever said those full words of I was sexually abused yeah man and those who have never seen that episode of a dope chick spiritual journey, you have to go check it episode out. 10. You have it, it's episode 10, season two, Linda, I know you shared it on yours yeah. and mm -hmm. I have it on, on mine. Yeah. So everybody it's originally uh sunrise yeah. um, interviewed me on her podcast, spiritually woke dope chicks. Yeah. And um, like someone had said to me, like, no, you've already said it on your other podcast. I was like, no, I've always alluded to alluded to alluded it. to I was um, physically abused. It was violent. It was militant. But I never said those exact words abused like th those words were harder for me to get out. I think I don't think people realize what it really, really takes to have the dreams and the life that we want. I think people think it sounds good. It sounds sexy, but you are literally living the difficult part of creating the life that you want. Like you made a decision. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. Th this other is just for the birds. The avatar, this life. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, it's not working. It's not working. But to get to the other side is like the mess that mm -hmm. people are like, it's like the point we made. They go to the gym and they're like, oh, this is hard. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to stop because it's too hard. It's too hard. Yeah. But it's it's harder not to be in good physical shape and to like have the life that you want. It's actually harder. Yeah. Well, it's like, do you want to pay to go to the gym or do you want to pay to be in the hospital? Ooh. See, somebody's watching. They just turned it off. They were like, I didn't turn on to hear that. Pause. And what like sometimes I'm documenting a whole crazy mess of transforming my life. Yes. Like I'm in the middle of transforming my life. I had to take the leap to get away from my Ooh. world where it was safe. I would get a, you know, two week, every week I would get my nice salary. I would enjoy it. Like I gave up a nice salary mm. <laughs> to go 
fully into, I don't know what, like literally, I didn't know what I was doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I just know that I just couldn't do that anymore. What I was doing before. Oh, just that can't do it huge. anymore. That is huge. And it's so inspirational to people who it's like they feel the way you feel, but they don't know how to get to where you are now. Yeah, I think that I is one of the but biggest they things. Know this, that I'm human and I don't know how to get there either. <laughs> well, I think that's the point, right? Like you, you made a decision that was like a step by step mm -hmm. and people have a tendency. We all do not people. We all do. We have a tendency to see where someone is yeah. in the present moment and like an, are enamored by where they are in the present moment. Yeah. And completely don't get the fact that there were like, there was a process. Yeah. There was a long process. Tedious process sometimes, you know, filled with turnarounds. I don't want to do it. I'm giving up. <laughs> Screw this. It ain't worth it. Okay, I'm going to do it again. I liken it. You know, have you ever seen the um, the Grinch version with... Um, with Jim Carrey is there's this part of the, of, of the Grinch where he's like, I don't know. I don't want to yeah. go. Should I say? And my, yeah. We always laugh that mm -hmm. that's, that's what like a journey is. It's so, like, I'm going to go. I'm yeah. going to stay. No, yeah. forget it. <laughs> that's, that's funny because I just did a, a podcast with Tam and um, she said something and I was like, that is what I'm going to call this podcast with you. She said, fuck your feelings. Yes. It's like that is perfect because I'm liking the captions I'm putting on, like the little titles I'm putting where it's like the same letters. So yeah. hi um hiding to healing. So hers will be fuck your feelings. And then we need one with the same letters. <laughs> that is good. My husband says that all the time in our couples <laughs> coaching sessions. Mm -hmm. He tells couples all the time, particularly like, well, he tells it to both people in the couple yeah. but he says that all the time he's like listen yeah your feelings will lie they will lie to you they will lie to you in the listen I wanted to walk out the gym just now me I was <laughs> I was lifting and I was like this is stupid why am I here this doesn't make any sense and then like I have a trainer who looks at me and he's like that weight is too light get the heavier one and I'm like go away go away <laughs> I was fine over here mm-hmm yeah, but you know, my feelings will say one thing, but of course he gives me the heavier weight mm -hmm. and I was able to lift it. So we basically that that lesson is you kind of need help. You need someone to be like pushing you. Yes. You need someone pushing you. Oh, I believe, I believe in that wholeheartedly. I believe that the work that you and I do, mm -hmm. whether it's art and hustle, a dope chick spiritual journey, or these, you know, art of inspiration conversations that we have, I think they're always pushing people. They're pushing yeah. people to think differently. They're pushing people to grow in the areas of their lives where are uncomfortable, mm -hmm. right? They're pushing people to like step out of their comfort zone and take a risk. Yeah. So we always, I definitely believe that. I, I believe we should have mentors. So for people out there who want to take a risk and who don't know what to do, one, they should come to the big leap. Yep. January 28th, 28th. I'm going to be there. 2023 workshops, sessions, a group full of powerful house women looking to like take big leaps, right? It was funny because I was like, yo, it, the different, it's the difference between a step and a leap. Mm -hmm. If you're in your house and you're like, oh, I'm going to step into the other room. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm just going to put one foot in front of the other. Yeah. Practice leaping into the next room. Yeah, I'm all about just do it. And it's funny because I have people um, who will just always try to curtail my leaping and jumping and just do mm. it attitude. How do they do it? Um, they want to know the whole plan or they'll just be like, well, no, you need to you know, know all the steps. You have to think of your plan. You got to do this. You got to do that. And they don't want to do anything until they know. Yeah and feel safe to do it all yeah we'll never feel safe and I'm not like that and mm -hmm. that's one of the things I got from my dad of like he will always figure out how to do it like yeah. how do I do that I'll do it myself let me figure it out mm. you know 
That was because like a lot of times our parents, they had no other choice as immigrants. Exactly. So he was like full, like he knew how to do carpentry. He would do his own electrician. So like in my house, like he just built like a whole nother house, a whole nother warehouse in the back, cemented the entire house, like built all of these things. And I had to build shit with him. Wow. So I, I remember being on top of the roof in the warehouse in the back doing the roof where I was like, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> like, who? why is nobody else up here with me? <laughs> oh, I, like so many things could happen to me. Yeah. I'm like, what is going on? But like the funny thing, I mean, I'm grateful only to this day of like, I probably can fix and do more things than a guy mm. you know so which is you know kind of a problem because if I know how to do all of these things like I might make I might make other people feel a little inadequate <laughs> just a, a little bit just, just a little, little bit. bit just a little bit yeah it's, it's it's been it's it's the journey to me right even that when you're talking about that was all part of your unfolding journey that so part of it too i think is we all get to look in ourselves and what are the qualities that help us to make take risks right so your friends who are always trying to curtail your your ambitions or your desires to like take leaps mm -hmm. they actually get to check themselves to figure out Hmm, where was that kid in me that was willing to take a risk and what happened to that kid mm -hmm. Right, like, because that person's in there. Yeah, we'll ne we will never feel a hundred percent safe. And really, like, whatever you're projecting to someone else, it's kind of a mirror. Oh, right, it's, it's a true. mirror. It's a mirror. Um, it is. There was a there was a funny thing I uh, posted. I forgot her name, but she was like, I, she was like, everybody that I talk to, I hope you feel amazing, fantastic, and, you know, great whenever someone speaks to me and feels safe, you know, because really I am just your mirror. I'm just reflecting back to you what you feel about yourself. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. like it, it's something that I'm bracing more in my life of like haters and people who say negative things towards me to not absorb it and to realize really it's a reflection on you. And I shouldn't, tr I shouldn't take it personally because I would, yeah. before I would take it hugely personal. So I'm trying yeah. not to take it personal more in 2023. You know what? Another way to say it, I had, um, a trainer that I, not, not a physical trainer, but like a, a life development trainer. Mm -hmm. And he, he likened it to different color lenses on, on glasses. He's like, yeah. we could all stand at the same point looking out of a window. Mm -hmm. Your glasses may be green. Mine may be red. Somebody else's is orange. And he said, when we look out, we're looking at the same thing, but the lens by which we're looking at it is colored, which changes our perspective. Yeah. And I think everybody, that's what you're everybody has crazy different color lens. Yes. Yes. But we're all looking at the same damn thing. Yeah. Like calling but it, it all looks, yeah, but that all looks different. Yes. Because of the perspective that we have yeah. and the baggage that we bring with us. Oh, it's the baggage. It's all, it's, the baggage and the shit and everything we bring it colors us. it well it colors the lens right yeah, it colors yeah. how we interact with people and it colors you know how we interpret our experiences with people from that i think that was like even the the risks that i've taken to do live events mm -hmm. some of my apprehension or the things that i had to work through like how you said you had to like work through stuff yeah was around relationships with people. Hmm, really? Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've done a lot of work around that because mm -hmm. I, I, I had some really difficult relationships with friends over the years. Mm -hmm. And I've realized what happened was early on, some of those relationships started to color how I would interact with people later in life. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kind of like, oh, well, I went through this. So let me be more careful. And let me be more careful. Or as soon as someone did something that even resembled 
that that scenario, I immediately put that person in a box. Oh, you're like that. So I'm not even going to engage with you or interact with you because- And were you, were you correct or not correct? Um, It's tough, right? I think what I learned more than being correct or not correct, I learned that human beings make natural mistakes mm -hmm. and none of us are perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm not perfect. Yeah, but I'm I was definitely expecting, not perfect. but I was expecting perfect friendships. Mm, okay. So okay. it was less about like right or wrong and more about what is my willingness to acknowledge what this friendship is, what it can be and what I'm comfortable having. Mm. It didn't have to be an all or nothing. Okay. And I was treating them like all or nothing. Okay. So you weren't being flexible. No. Oh, girl, no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I've learned too, that you never know like who's out there to help you. You never know who's going to be that person that helps you to take a risk. You never know who's going to come back no. years later. I know. <laughs> it's so true, but it, it's so true. And who's the person that's going to be the catalyst, right? I you, mean, I didn't think it. The, yeah. You were the catalyst for me to start my podcast, you know, slash TV show that I have on YouTube. Like that was you. Yeah. And you have been a catalyst for me to have these conversations to help me with also my evolution of the book and all of it as well. Yeah. To stop crying. <laughs> well, who knows? One day you might cry and it might be tears of like joy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will be. that By then yeah. like, I'm crying because I feel it. I'm not going to hold it back as opposed yeah. to a giant release balling kind of scenario yeah it'll be like holy crap look where i was yeah and look where i am now yeah yeah and it won't and be I a balling kind of thing it'll just be like i'm crying of joy oh yeah uh, i can't i can't wait i, I know you see it wait. <laughs> oh i see it like i'm i have that march date like ready to go March 31st. So you would be happy to know, I don't know, it was the same day that we talked or the next day I printed out my piles, which I said, I showed you, I sent you a little uh, I screenshot. Started. I started my piles. Um, I started, I was trying to figure out like, um, where are we get it published? You know? So like, to me, like, I like to work through random stuff. So I was Googling, where can I publish it? And I landed towards a website that said, Nick's book, you can print, you know, your wedding, your yearbook or whatever it is, right? So I was like, oh, let me just play with it. I think I was playing with Canva at one point and then I didn't yeah. really like the format of Canva. So then I was Googling something else. So I came across Nick's book and I liked the way their website was. So I'm using that for now to get my like layout ideas. Yeah. So I told you last week that I would do like 10 pages of my layout, right? So since I'm kind of an overachiever, I think I did like almost 50. What? what yes yeah, so I laid out art quotes and then like where the stories would go so the story's not done because I have to edit it whatever yeah but I've laid out just a rough place of like okay I like where this art goes I like where the quotes go let me see which things or whatever so I laid out like 50 pages of it kind of sort of that is freaking exciting so even though this is not, you know, it's not final, final, but it's the start of it. So you never know where it's Oh my go. goodness. You're so much like, and I, oh, the risk that you took to be like, I'm just going to put my life out there. I'm going to put it in a book and I'm going to take all these stories. There's so many people that are going to hear this Linda and who 2023, they started, they got it on a vision board. They have it on their goal list. I'm going to write my book this year. Mm -hmm. And I think people get stuck with taking a risk because they shift the focus. The focus is not on who, whose lives they'll touch. The focus is on me. On how I would look and how yes. we're going to, yeah, it's, it's the ego. Yes. It's the ego. It's the total ego. We have to kill the ego really. Oh, listen, death to it. You have death to. to it. And here's the thing. I tell people a lot of times ego is beneficial when you are in control of it. Yeah. Right? Like mm -hmm. 
LeBron James has an ego and his ego has gotten him to be one. He will be one of the best basketball players of all yeah, time. Like Kobe Bryant too, like his story. Kobe Bryant had ego, everyone, but their ego, they had control of it in context of when they needed it and when yeah. they, it needed to yeah. like yeah. be manifested. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But they weren't, the ego didn't necessarily control them. Yeah. They controlled it. Um, and like Will Smith too, like he had his like ego that he used to benefit him to get to his career. You yes. Know, he wanted to get to. Yeah. And unfortunately with the slap, that was one of those moments where the ego was in control of him. Yes. His auto unconscious auto pro programming of his avatar took control. To control and to control. Yep. Right. To protect itself, to do whatever. So I'm excited because this, I I believe even this little part of, of today's show, yeah. Yeah. someone's going to watch it and be like, I'm just going to do it. Because it's the journey. It's hearing it. the journey and hearing that I'm human. I'm not perfect. Yeah. I'm going to put it all out there for you. How many people, if they were to just do it? Yeah, because everyone's sitting on a dream or something they want to do to be a cook or to film this, you know, whatever it is, they're kind of sitting on it because they're not not sure of how to do it. They're not sure how they're going to look and they're just scared. So it's a fear that's holding them back as well. But yeah. I was telling Tam, like, I'm good at getting shit done. Like if I have a passion or a project or something that I'm really excited about that keeps telling, keeps talking to me, keeps giving me like, Linda, you should do it. You should do it. You should do it. I'm like, all right, I have to do it because it's literally something that has to get out. Yeah. You know, and the book was something that I kept thinking about, but I was scared because I'm, I'm putting my soul out there. I'm putting my story out there. Like it's a scary mm. thing because, you know, family's going to find out about it. People going to find out about it. Some people who never knew, you know, going to find out yeah. it's going to be shocking for a lot of people so I don't really know who in my family has watched it well so I don't know yeah what you do know is that a lot of people have watched it and have been freed by it mm. right mm. that's the part where it's like I know one person's been is getting freedom and you know conversations <laughs> yeah I know here's the thing I know they're probably a lot more they're just not ready to share, but even hearing you has gotten them to a place of like acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, that's all I want for people. I yeah. really want people to live their full, best, abundant life yeah. and to, you know, get the help where they need it. Mm -hmm. Whether it's listening to a podcast, whether it's going to a therapist, mm -hmm. um, ha hiring a coach, mm -hmm finding a mentor, taking yeah. an e-course, going to an event, just that's how you start. Yeah. That's how you start. Yeah. Taking just action. Taking action. Taking action. One step. Yeah. One step. Just do one thing. Just do one thing. Mm -hmm. one thing. I, was, I, was, I was listening. I was, no, I wasn't listening. I was reading a little bit. Like I grabbed all of my books of that I'm supposed to read that I haven't read, you know? Yeah. Cause I like audio books better. That's, you know, so yeah, me too. But since I'm writing my book, I was like, Oh, I'll have all these books that I haven't read. So I took Will Smith's book. And so I'll randomly go through the pages of like, okay, let me read a little bit of this little bit of that. But one of them was that his dad made him, you know, build a brick wall and his yes. dad's like brick by brick. Stop looking at this. And then when it, when it was wrong, they had to tear it down and start again. Mm -hmm. So brick by brick, you know, do one thing. Yeah. I think people get consumed or they get overwhelmed by the end result. Yeah. And then they compare the end result that's in front of them to someone's end result that has already been accomplished. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So because they're like, don't they have a daunting task of like that? How do I get there? Like, that's huge. Yeah. Like it's perfection. It's beautiful. I don't know how to get there. So I don't even know how to start. Yeah. But that's the journey. You got to start people. You got to start. Gotta just start. And yeah. what better way to start than January 28th, the big leap. Exactly. So did you talk to Tam or watch her last uh, edit that I did? I did. You guys look so beautiful in the like, man. 
we were wearing like the same outfit. <laughs> Did you watch the last one? No, I watched the first one. Well, you gotta watch the last one, week two. Okay. You have to watch week two. Was, we were wearing like the same outfit. I didn't see that one. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I have to pull that one. You have to watch that one because that one's really amazing for me as well to go on this journey with her because she's being super, you know, um, open with her story and going on this journey with me and um, I'm super and she's in a different she's in a different place of her journey yeah exactly and yeah I know I know and so I told her I was like I'm so grateful that you're actually willing and able to do these with me weekly you know and for her to just jump in with me I'm like let's do it I mean we literally made that plan at your brunch of like when are you free? Because I'm like a just do it kind of girl. So I'm like, are you free Wednesday? Let's do it Wednesday. <laughs> so Sunday, we literally, I think we did it Wednesday. Wow. So I'm like, if you want to do it, let's jump in. Like, what's the date? Let's let's put it in the calendar. I'll see you Wednesday. Let's let's chat. So that was the first one. Mm. And then two weeks later, we did the second one. But the second one was amazing because not only is she getting something out of it as well, I'm also tapping into my intuition and gifts as well as you know doing this with her yeah as she's speaking on the last podcast I'll see the same things of like she was she was talking about her book and I was like well I, th I think you have your pieces too because I visually see it above your head you know how we'll have like questions yeah. and things like y'all I'll talk about something and you'll see it or you'll talk about something I'll see it but I literally see books and paper on top of her head and I'm like, no, I think I, I, I don't believe you. I think I see it already. I think you have all your pieces to your book. And she's like, no, you know, you and Sunrise have them, but I don't have it. And I'm like, no, you do. And so what she just told me in the last podcast is that she found in her Google Docs. Uh, yeah, so she found in her Google Docs, basically the outline of her book that she had started. What? Yes, Sunrise. <laughs> Every week, there's some sort of revelation with her as well. So she found them. That's so cool. You know what that saying is? When the student is ready, the teacher appears. I mean, that's crazy, right? When the student is ready, the teacher appears. That is, yeah. But to me, it's also funny because like, like I said before, like I've never, I, I getting these intuition and these gifts, I'm starting to like, believe them more of my gut instincts and trust instincts, yourself, trust myself more. So for me to go on a podcast with her and just speaking, however I'm feeling and saying that, no, I don't believe you. Like, I don't really know her for me to say like, no, I don't believe you. Like, really? Like, why would I do that? Because me and normally I'd be like, I don't want to like call her out, like, and say yeah. something that's not right or not true. So for yeah. me to really sit in my own like feelings and intuition and like and in your truth, in my truth of like whatever I was saying, like I'm just going with the flow of the conversation and telling her what I see and the visions I see above her head and what I think and all of it was true in the podcast and it all worked out lined up of how I was feeling. So my powers of my superpowers now are coming out more. Yeah. As we have more of these beautiful conversations in general. Awareness is a hell of a thing. It's crazy. I was like, I, I even was like, this is amazing podcast conversation because the fact of me sitting in my truth or just telling you exactly what I think and and then hearing again that she had the outline of her book in her Google Docs. Yeah, awareness is a hell of a thing. The more we tap in, the the easier it is for us to allow those senses that we often quiet yeah you know they're they're able to to have the volume turned up mm -hmm. and many times that's what we do we turn life and circumstances and stress and family and upbringing and culture and society they force us to turn down the volume on intuition mm -hmm. on the holy spirit on whatever it is you choose to call it yeah. but that kind of part of the inside of you that is not attached to the physical realm. 
Yeah, exactly. And I try to keep nurturing that also with my kids of like, listen, you guys, like I try to remind them, like you have superpowers. So like just tap into it, whatever you're thinking or yeah. your instincts, you know? So the other day my son was, he had told me, it's like, mom, I think uh, December such and such is going to snow. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And so he's been tracking the weather and he's like, hey, look, it's going to snow. I predicted that, you know, obviously the weather might've changed and it's raining, but still like he, he was like, you know, I'm like, great. Like you happen to your, you know, I'm like trying to yes. like, you have superpowers, figure out what it is. Like, I think he's more like me. Like he's empathetic, compassionate. He could probably read a lot of people's minds and faces and mm -hmm. situations and energy. So I think he's got a lot of those gifts that I have. Yeah. Yeah. Keep nurturing it. Yeah, exactly. That is, that is the key. Mm -hmm. But I think people have a great opportunity to, you know, just what you said, just do it this year. Just do it. And that's actually one of the just do it. I actually gave myself that motto. Um, the year that I think it was the year, I think the year that she had passed where I was like, well, you know, there's nothing like death to wake you up. <laughs> you know, oh, There's nothing like death to wake you up. So I was like, my motto that year was like, just do it. Like I had started my Etsy business. I think that year where I was mm -hmm. like, this idea, let me just, just do it. Yeah. Brick by brick. Because at that point I had kids and like, I had a card business before that, but I was like, I can't do cards and have two little kids eating my beads and choking. And you know, yeah, that like, would be bad. Yeah. So I was like, I obviously can't do that business anymore. So I had to give that business up. And I'm like, well, what else can I do to make some extra money and keep my creativity alive? So I was like, well, like printables. Etsy printables like I can still design things on the computer and send pdf files to people and still make mm -hmm. money on the side and still be creative because then at that point I was designing like theme parties for my kids for fun yeah so I would sell the theme parties I did for them and sell it on Etsy there's always a way good. this episode should be called risk just it, do just it. Do it. <laughs> that's it risk it just do it Risk it, just do it. Yeah, there you go. There it is, right? Don't don't wait another minute. Don't overthink it another minute. Don't focus on the end result. Focus on what's the first step I need to take. Mm -hmm. And just do it. Just do it, exactly. Write an outline, right? Because somebody's thinking, oh, well, Linda, you're writing your book and you have art. Yeah, but you have if, someone, if you have an idea and a vision, write it down. Yeah, just write it down. Even if you don't know how to do it, you will figure it out and it will unfold before you as you start. As you start. As you start. I truly agree. Mm -hmm. You write it down, you yeah. put it out, you start. All of a sudden, someone will come, like the answers will come. I told you that's what happened with my first book. I was at a, I was at a, a, a conference and I had the first parts of the book and it was kind of written and it was done oh and yes yeah publishing space mm -hmm. and this woman gets up and she's like I'm a publisher and and I was like who here right then they shouldn't she say like who here has a book yeah what like she, she, her, her words were there are probably people in here and you have book ideas this is what I do da, 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 da. and she's my first publisher and literally that was it I went up to her and within a few well uh, that was in like September. The book had already been kind of written, flushed out. And by December, we were done with all the mock-ups, the cover, the editing. And I launched the book, Jan what was that? January, 2019 or something like that. There you go. Just start it and it'll unfold. And it'll unfold. Mm -hmm. Brick by brick by brick. There we go. Drop the mic. I don't think we have anything else to give them today. Exactly. exactly. Brick by brick, just do it. Take the risk. Take the, Take risk. the leap. Take the leap. <laughs> and then get your water bottles and journals that we have for the big leap. Yes. Get it. Link in the bottom. Exactly. Two. Link in the picture right there. Or no, right there. We're going to put it right there. <laughs> right there. I love it. Thank you again for our beautiful weekly conversations. Oh, I love it too. I appreciate you. Appreciate you as well. Have a great day. Good vibes. Good vibes. Good vibes. Good vibes. I just want to interrupt my own video here and let you know that um, if you can really help me out and 
like, subscribe, comment, because that really helps our algorithm and push it to people that really need to hear that. <laughs> Hey, but before we round out, let's let everybody know about our inspirational journal. Yeah. Yay. So excited. It's a great holiday gift. So make sure you go grab one. The link will be at the bottom of the screen. And, you know, don't just get one for yourself, get one for a loved one and start 2023 like making big dreams, big goals, or even heal. Cause we like to call them our healing and inspirational journals. Yes. So thinking of your master plan, that was the first one we did. So everybody yeah. like subscribe, comment below, and we're going to leave that link to our um, collab. So that we're so excited about. And then there's going to be mugs too, that we're going to put. Yes. Out. Yes. Grab your mugs, yep. grab your mugs. So, so next time you watch, watch, they can drink out of their mug and they can write notes their journal exactly exactly i love In, it so. to introduce themselves so linda tell the good people who you are i am linda chung i am kind of a jack of all trades i do a little bit of fashion design graphic design i'm a multimedia artist i'm a single mom of two kids divorced and um i'm you know the founder and owner of art and hustle and um, I've curated some art shows. Now I've gone into the podcasting world where I want to talk about the art of living. And I feel like every story will help and every story will heal. And that's how me and Sunrise got connected, where I saw you on Facebook and I was like, yes. I love your energy. She and, did. you know, if you would be so kind to join me on my podcast. And this is how it's all evolved now. Now we do our weekly inspiring conversations. So I'm so happy to be here with you today. I know partner. we're like cross pollinating. Yay! Yep. Yep. I mean, I love it because you have written your book and I was doing the podcast. And so since we connected, I was like, Sunrise, you got to do your podcast. I'm like, just do yes. it. Just jump in. Right. Yes. Yes. So for those who don't know, yes, I had this idea and it was stewing and I may have recorded one thing during um, the pandemic. And then when I connected with Linda, Linda was like, just do it. Do it. Those just are her it. exact words. She was like, just do it. She said, stop thinking about it. Stop mm -hmm. overthinking it. She said, just press record mm -hmm. and just do it. And yeah. So that first, first episode that everyone loves with Tenora from season one, that would have never happened had it not been for my girl, Linda. So I'm so glad that she is on my side of the mm -hmm. podcast to share her journey, mainly because everyone knows I do this show because I want people to feel comfortable in their relationship with a higher power. For me, I call it God whoever and whomever you are, I want people to feel connected to something bigger. And yeah, so yeah. I love having these conversations with people with different journeys. Yeah, so yeah. I will start with my first question, which I love to ask my guests, Linda, when you hear the word divinity or divine, what comes to mind for you? Um, I want to feel like it's hope and it's mm. uh, purpose and it's spirituality. So I've always said like, I never really wanted to call it just one name because I feel like all religion is should be all encompassing. So whatever you want to call it, whatever someone is, believes in, you know, Buddhism or whatever, I feel like we're all trying to obtain the same thing. Where we're all feeling, you know, where we want to be in touch with something, a spirituality, a divine, yes. your gut instincts or your intuition, mm. whatever it is, I feel like that's what divinity is. It's all of us. It's all encompassing. So I feel like it's a little bit of everything. And it's also like our purpose and of our authenticity. So yeah. if we can all be more authentic with our purpose and our intentions and to be in a space of who we are, mind, body, and soul, Love if we can that. be connected, then we will be able to be more authentic, sit here with you and to be who we are. So then there's no, there's less conflict around in the world. You yeah. know? When were you? finally getting back to me you know my art all I want to do is art and the other thing is that I love stories so like to me art isn't everything you 
your art is your voice, your speaking, your connection. You know, you can you can feel everyone's energy. That's your art. It's the art of living to me. So art and hustle to me is the art of living and art of it and everything. Uh, I hope that you've cut that piece right there and make it your intro and your outro because that.